Good morning. I invite us to stand. The Word of God reminds us that we do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. But if we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. It is to this end that Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. His word continues to comfort us, saying, May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised, for in his great mercy, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, he gave us new birth into a living hope, the hope of an inheritance reserved in heaven with nothing can destroy or spoil or wither. And so as a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. And as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, says the Lord. Blessed are those who mourn, for his word says they will be comforted. We continue in worship as we sing the hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee.
may be seated as we go before God in prayer. Lord God, this morning as we continue to acknowledge you as the source of all things, we also acknowledge God, your faithfulness on this new day. God, as we are in this moment, recognize that you are God who is Alpha, Omega, but you're also God who is in the middle. And so God, we just seek to rest all things into your hands. Trust in God, your hand at work in our lives. I pray, Father God, as we continue in this vein of worship, we do not forget, God, that a body lies in this sanctuary, that a family, Lord God, is coping with another loss within such a short space of time. And I believe that you are still God who comforts. And so, God, we look to you in this moment. I trust, God, that even as we worship through song, God, as we read your word, as we fellowship one with the other, that, God, we can truly be encouraged. But, God, in this space and in this time, we acknowledge you. And, God, we place you above all things. Continue, Lord God, to speak to us, to guide us, and to strengthen us, we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning I just want to welcome all of us who have come to support the Hewlett family in another time of continued grief. As a few months ago you would have laid Melly to rest and here you are again with Lionel. But I'm sure the family is grateful for your support, your strength and your calls. And so I acknowledge all of you who have come. I also want to acknowledge our Governor General, Dame Marcella Liburd, and her presence here today. My name is Onita Samuel Warren, and I have the pleasure of guiding us through today's service. At this time, I invite two family members appointed to bring tributes this morning. Good morning, church. Good morning, family. Um, it is a, with a heavy heart I come before you this morning um, because, as Pastor Samuel Warner said, we just were here a few months ago with my other beloved cousin, Nelly. Um, so, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Guy. I grew up here. One here in St. Kitts, my name is, everybody knows me as Connie. I am Lister's cousin. His mother and my father are brother and sister. Um, and my earliest memory of Lister is soon after he was born, um, hanging out with him at my aunt's house. In those days, many of us lived in, in close proximity to each other. So you could always go to Aunt Betty's house, get her a great meal, because she was a phenomenal cook. Um, she was also a great seamstress, so she would make clothes and stuff for us. And I remember hanging out there with Lister, and then soon after that we left. But there was a, there was a funny thing that in, in this family, that even when we were far apart by distance, there was always a connection among us. And um, so whenever I met with him again, he came to the States, he was in the Army. Um, I met with uh, Lydia and um, before the kids were born. It was a very special time. Any time with Lister was a special time because he was one of these people who just took joy everywhere he went. Everywhere you saw him, he was, you know, everybody around him was happy. Um, he just had that knack for making you feel good about, about the, the time you're in when you spend it with him. And so we were planning to get together again when we came back here for this reunion. Um, and when I saw him in March, you know, we were planning to get together and spend some time and that was not to be. So, I, I wish his wife Lydia and his kids, Kiara and Jameer, 
strength and courage and grace as you weather this terrible storm. I can't imagine what your loss must be. Um, you know, such an untimely thing, such a sudden and just, just a terrible way to lose somebody so close to you. Um, for the extended family also, my prayers go out to you. Um, let's band together and support each other through this. Um, for his, the, the, his fellow coaches, the kids that he worked with, um, you know, coaching, coaching football, uh, I know he'll be sorely missed there also. And I know that he'll continue doing this work in heaven. So, my dear beloved cousin, until we see you again, until we meet each other again, um, Godspeed. Morning, everybody. It wasn't just a, a, a cousin. It was like a brother to me. He was in St. Paul before he joined the army. He lived with me. We used to go out and do work today, do jobs together, do plumbing job, electrical work. We bonded. We can't see how much I'm going to miss him. We're looking forward to coming down here and just spending time with him, catching up. Um, God. He was a great human being, a great friend. We did so much together. I Me, mean, you can pick. You can't pick your family, but you can pick your friend. And he was a friend. He wasn't just a family member. We now have the eulogy. morning church Sincerest sympathy to the children family friends and well-wishers of Lister during this very difficult time um, I am humbled uh, to have been given the opportunity to memorialize Lister and hopefully I do him justice by even just elucidating just even a small amount of what he meant to all of us. Lionel Alyssa Hewlett, affectionately known as Alyssa, was born on May 26th, 1963 in Bastia, St. Kitts. He was the last of six children born to his mother, Lillian Hewlett. His father was Stanley Brown. An avid sports lover, this was Alyssa. But not only did he love these sports, he played cricket, basketball, and football, but he excelled at all of them. Despite his excellence in all three sports, nonetheless, football became his ultimate love. Lister climaxed his high school career as a sports victor. Therefore, it was not surprising when Lister was selected to represent the national football team at a young age among the likes of Sabo, Pepe, Tini, and all the other great footballers of that generation. Unfortunately, Lissa was injured before the tournament and was robbed of the opportunity to compete for his country. Despite this though, Lissa remained one of the most tactical football players and later coach. His ability to understand the game was unmatched. Soon after this injury, however, Lissa migrated to the USA and served in the United States Army for over 20 years, retiring with the rank of Staff Sergeant. His tenure in the Army helped to shape and mold the man we all came to know. 
disciplined, committed, resourceful, intentional, yet always very calm, even under pressure. This is the Lister we all grew to know and to love. A proud and doting father of his daughter Kiara and son Jameer. And though Lister was a man of little words, he often found many when he spoke of his children. And though for the latter part of his and though the latter part of his years were spent physically apart from his children, Lister's love and admiration grew fonder. He found solace and joy in speaking about them to the people closest to him. Lister was the epitome of discipline. This translated in every aspect of his life, especially football. Upon his return to St. Kitts just over seven years ago, Lister was instrumental in co-founding Goals Academy with his longtime friend, Tinny, owing primarily to his love for football and children. Since then, he dedicated the rest of his life to the development of youths in football here in our federation. And as one of the senior coaches at Goals Academy, the children and parents benefited from Lister's dedication and commitment. Our Cubs group, which is the littlest ones, ages five to six, were his passion, and they received the foundational development necessary for their future success. He has left an indelible mark at the Goals Academy, and his legacy will remain. Now, earlier we spoke of Lister's calmness, but don't be mistaken, once he was passionate, he would hold a good argument. For example, when he defended Chelsea FC, Lister was the ultimate Chelsea fan, and Congo and Vinci and Tinny and Manaras were in for a treat because he was sure to defend Chelsea with all his might. The arguments were endless. Lister was not only a Chelsea fan. I'd say he was their out-of-country coach in the truest sense, as he passionately coached his team from the other side of the TV, hardly ever missing a game. Lister's last years spent at home gave him the opportunity to rekindle childhood friendships. It was only on the Saturday before that fateful day that Lister called me to inquire of the start date of the academy in September because his friend wanted to have his son join. The text message is still in my phone with his friend uh, Ramesh's email address. This text and Lister, I, I don't think I've ever received a text message really from him, but this text was followed up with another call to ensure that I had received it and to make sure his friend was given preference, preference for his son to join the next season. He reiterated on that phone call that this was his friend repeatedly, simply because he knew the spots will fill in minutes and he wanted to make sure that his friend's spot was secure. Lister's circle was small, but the impact he made on those around is unforgettable. And as he would always say, we don't need all this fancy stuff. And I know at this point he's probably thinking that I've said too much because he's usually just a man of just the simplest things. So I will close by saying that he will be lovingly remembered as a loyal and dedicated father, brother, uncle, cousin, friend, and coach. Thank you. Thank you for that remembrance. We continue as we sing the hymn, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. O oh, other forties of glory divine. During the singing of this hymn, an offering will be received. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. O oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. 
praising my Savior. This is, this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior. We sing verse one again. Blessed, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Ear of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long perfect submission perfect submit perfect delight perfect delight visions of rapture no burst on my sight angels descending angels descend bring from above bring from above echoes of mercy and whispers of love this is this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day. Perfect submission, perfect submit. All is at rest. For I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching, waiting, looking above. Looking above, filled with His goodness. Lost in his love, I invite us to stand as able. For this is mine, and this is my song, praising my Savior. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Let us pray. Father God, we continue with hearts of thanksgiving as we recognize God, your continued presence, and God, how you continue to sustain us throughout our entire life. God, even if we do not acknowledge who you are, you are still God who blesses us. You're still God who provides. But God, I trust all of us in here today will just remember your goodness. I pray God, even as you continue to guide us and continue, Lord God, to open our eyes to the needs around us. May we, Lord God, always be open to be a blessing to someone. In the same way, God, I ask you continued blessings upon this ministry and the offering that has been received today continues, Lord God, to do work here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We now have a reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 through to 8. Good morning, church. The scripture reading is taken from Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 to 8. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. 
a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rent and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Remain seated as we sing the hymn, Father Along, we'll know all about it. Father Along, we'll understand why. Tempted and tried when oft made to wonder why it should be thus all the day. Why there are others, why there are living about us, never molested though in the wrong, never molested though in the wrong. But Father, long we know all about it. Father, long we understand why. Cheer up, don't worry. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Come and take it up. It leaves our home so lonely and drear. Then do we wonder why others prosper? Living so wicked year after year. But Father. Said our loving master, our loving man. A few more days, a few more days to labor. Toils of the road will then seem as nothing. As we sweep through the beautiful gate. So Father along we'll know all about it. Father along we'll understand why. Cheer up, don't worry, live in the sunshine. We'll We see Jesus coming in glory. Oh, coming when he comes from his home in the sky. Then we shall meet him in that bright mansion. We'll understand it all by and by. All by. Father along, Father along, we'll cheer up, live in the sunshine, we'll understand it all by. So Father along we'll know all about 
with it. Father, long we understand why. Cheer up, don't worry. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Amen. I take this opportunity on behalf of the Moravian Church to thank its conference, but more specifically the Zion Moravian Church to offer our own condolences to the children of Lionel, that is Kiar and Jamea, to his sisters, Judith, June, brother Jeff Hewlett, many nieces and nephews. Let us pray. God, you are our strength. You are our comfort. You are our peace. We ask as time passes, May it be good to the family. Continue, Holy Spirit, to speak as only you can and to guide as only you can. And God, may all of us continue to be encouraged as we go through different seasons of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A few months ago, I encouraged all of us specifically the family at Millie's funeral, of the importance of giving God thanks in advance. And here the writer to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 reminds us of this importance as he presents this dichotomy of the two different seasons. That at one time things can be going so good for us, and on the other hand we can be face facing the other end of the stick. And it draws us to that place to realize how important it is to find time to give thanks. But the saying, I have time for some reason, keeps playing on my mind as I reflect on the passing of Lionel. Because for the past year or so, you, the family, has in the matter of months lost family members, notably our three brothers. And as you do so, all of us must think more seriously on the time we have with each other. Because the notion we have time can easily creep up on us. After 21 years of marriage as I share this story written by Stephen entitled Give Time to a Family. He said after 21 years of marriage, my wife wanted me to take another woman out to dinner and a movie. She said, I love you, but I know this other woman loves you. May I tell you, when I first saw the story, I said, what kind of story is this? But thankfully, as you read on, she said, I love you, but I know this other woman who loves you and would love to spend time with you. The other woman that my wife wanted me to visit was my mother, who has been a widow for 19 years. He says, but the demands of my work and my three children had made it possible, impossible to visit her occasionally. That night, I called to invite her to go out for dinner and a movie. And she asked me, what's wrong? Are you well? He said, my mother is the type of woman who suspects that a late night call or a surprise invitation is a sign of bad news. And I thought that it would be pleasant, he said, to spend some time with you. Just the two of us. She thought about it for a moment and then said, I would like that very much. That Friday after work, he said, as I drove over to pick her up, I was a bit nervous. But when I arrived at her house, I noticed that she too seemed to be nervous about our date. She waited in the door with her coat on. 
She had curled her hair and was wearing the dress that she had worn to celebrate her last wedding anniversary. She smiled from a face that was as radiant as an angel's. I told my friends that I was going to go out with my son and they were impressed, she said, as she got into the car. And they can't wait to hear about our meeting. He said we went to a restaurant that although not elegant, was very nice and cozy. My mother took my arm as if she were the first lady. And after we sat down, I had to read the menu because her eyes could only read large print. Halfway through the entries, I lifted my eyes and saw mom sitting there staring at me. A nostalgic smile was on her lips. It was I who used to have to read the menu when you were small, she said. Then it's time that you relax and let me return the favor, I responded. During dinner, we had an agreeable conversation, nothing extraordinary, but catching up on recent events of each other's life. We talked so much that we missed the movie. But as we arrived at her house later, she said, I'll go out with you again, but only if you let me invite you, I agreed. How was your dinner date? asked my wife when I got home. Very nice, much more so than I could have imagined, I answered. A few days later, he said, my mother died of a massive heart attack. And it happened so suddenly that I didn't have a chance to do anything for her. And sometime later, I received an envelope with a copy of a restaurant receipt from the same place my mother and I had dined. An attached note said, I paid this bill in advance. I wasn't sure that I could be there, but nevertheless, I paid for two plates, one for you and, for the, and the other for your wife. You will never know what that night meant to me. I love you, son. As he concluded, he said, at that moment, I understood the importance of saying in time, I love you, and to give our loved ones the time that they deserve, because nothing in life is more important than your family. So give them the time they deserve, because these things can be put off till some other time. My family, may I tell you, as I reflected on this story, it brings me to that point that whenever I'm assisting families to prepare to honor their loved ones with final burial rites. I have observed from our conversation that the common factor for many was guilt. And therefore, I remembered one of my spiritual brother who recently said to me in his own loss, as he sat with tears in his eyes, he said, I kept saying, I need to have this and I need to have that so I can spend more time with my godmother. He continued, I had been so busy and preoccupied thinking I needed to have certain things in place which every time made me delay to see her. And he said, I feel so guilty because since she has passed, I have been to her house more times this week than I have ever done in the past few months. And he said, I realized I had the time all along. I just didn't make sure that I used it wisely. Certainly there are different circumstances which see us allude to the reasons that we do have time. And the phrase, I have time, can suggest or mean different things to different people. It may mean that you are available, that is, that I have time to come and do what is requested of me. So if for example, Marvin asks, can you come and check this vehicle for me because it is leaking? To which you will respond, yes, I have time. It means you have come because you are available and you are free. Sometimes we say I have time when things are pressing. We may be preparing to go somewhere or to do something but others notice how close we may be cutting it with time. But we say to ourselves, I know I will make it on time. So we say, I have time. For example, you have one hour before you must leave for the airport. And you haven't finished packing as yet. 
but you tell yourself, I am not going to miss my flight. I will finish packing in a timely manner because I have time. Some of us, we say we have time because we are just bored. This is when we do not have anything at all to do and we just say, I have plenty times on my hands, so I have time. Some of us, we think that we have time when we procrastinate or we put off. It is when we consider that something can be done now, but we choose to put it off and do it at another time. One may say, I have time with the intention of doing so later. Some of us say we have time because we may be fearful. We may say we have time when we are most afraid of facing the truth about something or someone, or perhaps we are fearful of facing a challenge that may be ahead of us, and so we delay and delay out of fear. I want to remind us today that as the writer to Ecclesiastes remind us, there's a time and season for everything. And depending on the context, we may use this phrase, I have time to suit our situation. But when we lose that time we thought we had, in some instances it is gone, and there is no recovery from that. And from there, there will be some things regarding time that you and I will have no control over. We have no control over our aging process. We have no control over the length of our lives. We have no control whether the rain came this morning after three, four in the morning, or if sun is gonna shine today. We have no control over hurricanes and earthquakes that come our way. And we have no control over the past. Thinking that we have more time puts everything into perspective. Sometimes we think we have more time to spend with those we love daily. Sometimes those moments we play in our minds, I wish I could have called when he or she ran on my mind. I wish we would have done more things together because we thought we had time. But death is something we cannot simply say we have time. And may I dare say when it comes even to this life we are living, a life where God calls us to prepare ourselves for the end of the age, prepare ourselves for when we die. We must realize that even salvation in Jesus Christ is something that we cannot say we have time. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 8 says, None of us can hold back our spirit from departing. None of us has the power to prevent the day of our death. There is no escaping that obligation, that dark battle. And in the face of death, wickedness will certainly not rescue the wicked. We can't play around thinking that we have time when it comes to our own life and when it comes to death. And when I read God's word again, I find even Jesus too was very disappointed at his generation for their inability to discern even the times. He said in Luke chapter 12 and verse 54 to 56, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say a shower is coming, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say there will be hot weather, and there is. And he chastised them and said, you hypocrites, you are able to discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? That is, them being unaware that he, the Messiah, had come and that he was right before them. And the one they had read the many prophecies about was right in front of them, but they missed understanding it all together. As I continue to read God's word, Paul in his letter to those in Rome spoke on this matter. He says, and do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, 
but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its loss. Meaning those things that we find ourselves carrying out on a day-to-day -day basis, we have to ask ourselves, are these things even worth our time? And is God maybe calling us to use this time more wisely? In the physical, I believe we have lost so much time searching for things that God Almighty has already provided for us. One of the things I observe is that sometimes we have people who may be in our lives and we still find ourselves yearning for other people when God has already provided the people that we need in our lifetime. In the spiritual, we also may miss those shifts that God has ordained for us, either because we are caught up and using our time in places and spaces that we fail to see God's hand at work in our lives. And while we are living, I say to us, do not just focus on the here and now, but focus on what is to come at the end of the age. We cannot go back in time and undo. But in the present, as we are looking forward, we can make better decision when it comes to our time. Ephesians 5, 16 says, we ought to be making the best use of the time because the days are evil. You know, just on Sunday, the Holy Spirit reminded us as we were looking at the parable of the wheat and the tears, and that is the parable where the farmer had gone out and sown his own, wheat, his own seeds, and here come his enemy come and sowed his seeds, and when his servants came and recognized that they were wheat going and, and weeds going and they were like how are we supposed to respond to this and I reminded us through the Holy Spirit that evil exists in this world and we can't change that fact wickedness will always be in this world but we can't change that fact and we cannot use that as an excuse not to make good use of the time that God has given us here on earth. We must realize that even in those wicked days and evil times, you and I still can grow in the name of Jesus Christ. And so while we can undo certain things, in the present we are being called to make better decisions. It therefore demands you and I to be more intentional with the usage of our time. And this may mean paying attention to the things that should be important to you. We must ask ourselves, are some of the things we are doing right now, is it worth it? Is it really worth our time and our energy? For some of us, it may mean less time to social media. For some of us, it may mean being intentional with saying no to people when it matters most? What would it profit you when others are making use of your time and completing their task, but your task and my task in life remains nothing but stagnant or an empty shell only of if onlys? And sometimes we give people the time that we were supposed to be able to use for our own lives. Sometimes we must know when to say no. What if being intentional with the usage of our time means just resting, sleeping, going on vacation, so that the body has sufficient energy to do things that matter? By now, all of us understand that saying, you die today, somebody is going to pick up the work tomorrow. How about being more intentional means that when someone comes on our hearts or in our minds, we send them a message, we call them, or we visit them. What if intentional usage of our time means spending more time seeking God for his will over our lives? What about intentional uses of our time being spending time meditating on God's word, listening to God, talking with God, reasoning with God? It was Moses in Psalm 90 who said, Lord, through all the generations you have been our home, before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth, and even to the world from beginning to end, you are God. And it seems to, to, to suggest that if a home or dwelling is a place of safety, covering, 
protection, provision, love, and refuge that Moses is here describing God as being the ultimate one who is his safety net, who is his covering, who is his protection, who is his provision, who is his love, who is his refuge. And for him to describe God like this means that throughout his life, this is who he has come to know and experience God to be. More so as he continued, he takes time to acknowledge God as the source, establishing again that before anything was created, just as it started, and when this world ends, God will remain in his divine position as the supreme. In essence, Moses was saying not even time can or will change this fact about who God is because the God we serve is timeless. And so while everything else around us is fading away, the God we serve is a God who is timeless. And so how about we be more intentional with spending time with this very God? Perhaps being intentional means to feed our soul with the things that are positive, and inspirational. Perhaps being intentional also means spending time preparing for the return of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We have to understand that even as we are living in these days, time waits on none of us. And we have to stop saying we have time because some of us know we don't have time. And so that call comes for us to realize that those things that perhaps we are putting off and we know we have to do, I say, do them. Those people we need to go and see, go and see them. That money you don't want to spend because you feel good, hold it till the end of time and somebody else will take it and use it for you, use it now. Use your time wisely. God calls us to this place to remember that he is returning again and we are called to prepare ourselves for that return lest he finds us still saying I have more time and that time is taken away. God reminds us as we are living our lives daily that he is the author of this lifetime and if he were to call us home today or tomorrow Will we be ready when our time comes? May God continue to speak to our hearts and to our minds as we reflect on this life that we are living and consider the time that we are in, in Jesus' name. Amen. In reflection, the songwriter says, Jesus said, here I stand, won't you please let me in and you said I will tomorrow. It's not printed, but just allow me to minister as we reflect on this whole matter of time. Jesus said, here I stand, won't you please let me in? And you said, I will tomorrow. Jesus said, I am he who supplies all your needs and you said I know but tomorrow Won't you please take my hand? And you said, I will tomorrow. Jesus said, I am he who supplies all your needs. 
days and you said I know but tomorrow It's so much easier to say tomorrow who promised you tomorrow better choose the Lord today cause tomorrow very well might be too late cause tomorrow Let us pray. God, there are so many questions, so many thoughts at times running through our mind. But God, I want us really to consider those things that really matter most in this life. And God, at the top of it is you. You should be our number one priority when it comes to our time. For we can find time to do everything else. It means we should find time to be with you. God, today, Lionel's death brings us to a place, God, we have families going through this once again. And so God, I pray that they continue to hold each other close. That they say, I love you in time and not after time. That they embrace each other. That they surround each other. And God, help all of us to think about our own families. Think about those people, God, that matter most. And again, to tell them in time how much we appreciate them. I pray, God, no one here has to go through the guilt of losing someone, but rather to be at peace when losing someone whether it be a mother or a father, a brother or a sister, a grandparent, a child, a cousin, a nephew, whoever it is, to realize, God, that time is now. Not just tomorrow, it is now. So God, I pray that someone's heart and soul would hold on to this word and to consider the time that we have now. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, hear us. For by your human birth, by your obedience and faithfulness, by your prayers and tears, by your agony and passion, by your dying words, your reconciling death, by your rest in the grave, and by your triumphant resurrection and your abiding presence, bless and comfort us, O Lord. May I invite us to stand and hold hands as we sing the Lord's Prayer together. Oh, Father, Shot in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. 
it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we continue in prayer. Most holy and merciful God, you are the refuge and strength of those who put their trust in you. We praise you that in this moment, God, for all to whom amid the trials of this mortal life, that you have given the faith that overcomes the world, who have peace in you and rejoice in hope of your glory. We thank you for being God before whose face the generations continue to rise and God they even pass away. And Father God, we bless and praise your name for all who have departed this life in faith. And God, especially in this moment, we thank you for Lionel Hewlett, for all your kindness to him throughout his earthly life. We say thanks. God, we thank you that for him our sickness and sorrow are ended, that death itself is past. And so, Almighty God, may we be inspired by the example of your saints, run with patience the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, so that when this mortal life is ended, we too one day may be gathered with those whom we love in the kingdom of your glory, where your word says there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. God, continue to lead us through these changing times and to the rest and blessedness of eternity. Be near us, God, to comfort and uphold. Make us to know that your people are precious in your sight. And God, as we thank you for Lionel Hewlett, whose life was shared, may all of us, especially his family and loved ones, trust you at this time of parting. Again, God, give of your strength that we may take up our lives more bravely and seek to be more faithful in duty, more loving and helpful to others, following those who are no longer with us here on earth. And may we in our turn find in your great mercy the perfect and unending rest of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand as we commend Lionel Hewlett to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your power you gave us life, and in your love you have given us new life in Jesus Christ. So God, we entrust Lionel Hewlett to your merciful keeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again, that we might enjoy eternal life. And I pray the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God Almighty. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. As we recess, I invite the Paul Bearers to prepare themselves. We sing, when peace like a river attendeth my way, 
and sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot that was taught me to say, it is well with my soul. We will move at the singing of the second verse. Those who are seated on my right in the middle aisle, and Oshul Kani asked you to step aside to allow the easy passing of the casket. Thank you. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roam, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is when.
Jesus said, set your children's hearts at rest, trust in God always, trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I am going to prepare a place for you. We know that when our earthly frame is destroyed, and we possess 
a building provided by God, eternal and in heaven. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. All who have faith in me shall live, even though they die. No one who lives and has faith in me shall ever die. So, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives you victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have entrusted lying and we left to God's merciful keeping. Now we commit his body to the ground. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, shown certain hope for the resurrection to eternal life. To our Lord Jesus Christ who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever and ever. O Father God, we pray to you for those who may love and see no longer. Grant them your peace, that light perpetual shine upon them, and in your loving wisdom and almighty power, working them with the purpose of your perfect will. Father, Father, the mercy and the giver of all comfort, deal graciously with all who mourn, casting every care upon you, they may know the consolation of your love. Support us all the day long of this earthly life until the shadows lengthen and evening comes. The busy world is hushed. The fever of life over. And our world over. Then, O oh Lord, in your mercy, grant us, those we love, safe lodging, for the rest, and peace of the land. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, amen. And I pray the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of God, and the church of the Holy Spirit. Rest in the middle of the Bible this morning.
but God, we continue to say thank you for the years that this earth was blessed with the gift of life and healing. God, we continue recovery upon the family, the children, the siblings, the nieces, the nieces, and the many, Lord God, lives that he would have encountered and been uplifted to. Every God, they have the strength to continue to live out, Lord God, those things that we would have been part of, those organizations, God, that we would have been part of, I say, God, that they also continue to carry on the legacy. God, as the days continue for those who may be traveling, I ask for you to coming upon them, and may all things be well. The Lord comes to bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you, and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you.